Will you please join me left side? Listen while I build my case, God, the most honest prayer you'll ever hear. Show the world I'm innocent. In your heart, you know I am. Go ahead, examine me from inside out. Surprise me in the middle of the night. You'll find I'm just what I say I am. My words don't run loose. I'm not trying to get my way in the world's way. I'm trying to get your way, your word's way. I'm staying on your trail, putting one foot in front of the other. I'm not giving up. I call to you, God, because I'm sure of an answer. So answer, bend your ear, listen sharp. Paint grace graffiti on the fences. Take in your frightened children who are running from the neighborhood bullies straight to you. Even though the wicked are out to get me and my enemies are closing in, I am the apple of your eye. You hide me under the shadow of your cool wing feathers. Amen. Thanks, Robin. Well, for the next couple of weeks, up until Advent, we're going to take just a little closer look at the Psalms, and particularly how they shape our imagery and our understanding of God and of this season of giving thanks. So when I was growing up, like most kids, I thought uh, most of the stuff that my parents did was either weird or wacky, wild, or just pretty worthless, right? Right? especially when it came to living out their faith and values. Now it turns out that it's actually just really good sermon material. (laughs) But one of the things that was especially odd for newcomers entering our home was a copious array of Christian art. My parents worked in printmaking for a number of years before my dad went to seminary, So we had a whole host of both popular and obscure art up on our walls. Definitely way too many pieces for most interior decorators' tastes. They especially liked woodcut prints and had a number of these Fritz Eichenberg pieces, these provocative images. Let's see if Clint can put that up on the screen. Um, these kind of provocative images of Jesus in stark relief, standing in bread lines or on the subway or modern everyday workers building a large wooden cross. It was God cut into everyday life, much of it surrounding suffering. They also had this really large, like gigantic picture uh, of this pencil drawing of Dorothy Day, Mahatma Gandhi, and Martin Luther King Jr. They're, they're heroes and modern-day prophets, um, lifting up voices who were caring for their neighbors uh, as we were growing up. But probably one, uh, the one that caught people's attention most was always hung right in our front entryway uh, wherever we lived. And it looked a little bit like this. Um, though I couldn't find the exact piece that we had. But basically, it was all these faces uh, of Jesus, interpreted through different cultures from around the world, depicted by different artists from over the last couple thousand years. These were often the first faces that greeted us as we walked in our front door, and folks who came over would sort of lean in as they were saying hello and wiping off their feet, catching one or most of Jesus' eyes in the process. And I remember one of my friends, uh, as we ran downstairs to play video games, saying, geez, your parents are super religious. He wasn't wrong. But this tapestry of woodcuts and doves and Jesus' faces against our faux wood walls told this story of my parents' faith. Their blending of social justice, care of our neighbors, and how they still viewed God active and a part of our everyday lives. And I understand now so much more how this subtle imagery informed and helped shape and nurture my faith and where I continue to see God at work in the world. Those parents are always up to something, aren't they? 
They were literally saturating our environment with what they believed and their values and how they lived out their faith both in public and private. And they wanted me to see, they wanted my brother and I to see this wide and expansive understanding of God. They wanted me to see Jesus, not just in those who looked like me or dressed like me or talked like me, but they wanted me to start to piece together how I saw God at work in our world and who my modern day heroes would be and where I continue to draw inspiration and comfort in my faith and in our family. That's one of the things that we're exploring and that I love about the Psalms and what I think they have been given for to generations and generations of Jews and Christians is this opportunity to start piecing together what God is up to in our lives and where we draw inspiration and comfort in our faith. This is the starting place, this entryway. And the Psalms are an approachable, raw, rich collection of stories and images of how God is cut into everyday life. And if you haven't picked up a Bible in a while or maybe in a very, very, very long time, I would suggest that the Psalms are the place to start, preferably in some sort of modern translation like the message that we read from today, which tries to capture the artistry and the poetry of these beautiful love songs and poems to God. In today's psalm, like many of the psalms, the writer is reaching out to God for support and help. It's a request to be seen by God, to be truly known by God, to be understood as only God can ultimately understand us. And the writer pleads for a response, for an answer, for help and comfort. We don't know exactly kind of what's going on in this situation, but we do know that our ancestors in the faith didn't have it easy. They knew war, they knew oppression, they knew violence, they knew betrayal in their own families and heartache and sickness and incivility, much like we still do and are faced with today. And the author of the psalm appeals to God for justice, for compassion, for God's ear and God's winged comfort for support. And it's amazing to me this license that it gives for listeners and readers now to be bold and to trust that God is going to keep us safe, that God will deliver us from evil even when the world is often unyielding. But more than anything, what this psalm and what other psalms invite us into and help us to do is give language and voice to our images and pictures of God. They start to hang the art on the walls of our hearts and our minds. And the good news about the language and imagery, particularly in the Psalms, is that it is so wide and so expansive, as wide and as expansive as our own need is, and as wide and as as expansive as God's love is. Like way too many pictures hung on the walls of our entryway growing up, the psalm gives us and invites us to name this multidimensional, multi-relational, multi-layered, multi-experiential image of God at work cut into our everyday lives. In this psalm alone, we see that God is a painter. God is one who stands up to bullies. God is one who is safe and can do something about our struggles, if not alleviating our suffering, then experiencing and walking through it with us. God is one who knows us. God is one who loves us. God is one who treasures and cherishes us. As we sang this morning, we are the apple of God's eye. Isn't that a beautiful image? But this is the one that really gets me. God is the one who covers us with cool feathers, like a gigantic big bird or a tiny little human underneath God's great wing. And I thought of it kind of like, uh, like this picture, if you kind of look closely. Um, for me, it was like this great horned owl with a baby owlet under its wing. Don't you just want to put that up on a poster in your entryway at home? So that people know that in your home, like God, we are surrounded by this feathery, snuggly love of the divine that keeps us warm. And it's super cozy, right? But if you look closely, um, I wouldn't want to mess with that owl or owlet either. 
It's like sleeping with one eye open. <laughs> that is truly the magic of the internet. But this is just one psalm, one image, one interaction, one poem, one piece of the great living archive of images for God. And there are so many more throughout Scripture in the Psalms and the prophets and in the New Testament. We see that God is a potter creating and recreating. We see God as a solid fortress and foundation keeping us grounded. We see God as a woman in labor giving birth again and again and making us new. We see God as a mama bear, protective and calming. And God as a great cypress tree, sturdy and growing. Just to name a few of those images. All of these pictures of God hanging in the great entryways of Scripture. And this is why I think this really matters for us today. What we see and what we say about God really matters. Our language shapes our openness to what we believe and how we behave and how we respond to what God is up to all around us. And having a starting point of images and multidimensional pictures helps us to be open to how God might be showing up even in something or someone that looks different than us that might not shame our same values or beliefs. Anne Lamont, the great living Christian author and speaker, says that I know that I am making God in my own image when God starts hating the same people that I hate. I know that I am making God in my own image when God starts hating all the same people that I hate. Having a diverse picture of the way God works helps us to not get caught seeing just the reflection of God in the mirror. Not seeing just our own picture of what God is all about. Having a whole entryway full of these pictures helps us to stay open to the way that God continues to move and be cut through our everyday lives and relationships. That might mean that we see God as a coach or a physical therapist encouraging us. That might mean that we see God in a janitor or a sanitation worker cleaning up after our mess. I saw God this week actually in a Sprint store employee who loved his job and knew exactly what to do after my phone had an unfortunate run-in with a very leaky backpack leaf blower. I saw God in the determination of cooks and servers and dishwashers and platers of lutefisk feverishly separating the, with joy the piece of cod that truly does pass all understanding. <laughs> I saw God and folks filling the cracks of the remnants of the Berlin Wall with flowers on the 30th anniversary of its falling. And I see God in the amazing works of Jesse DeCourcy and these new young children that were brought into the family of God here with us this morning. But the reality is, though, for me, that I probably miss God way more uh, than I saw God this week. I didn't make sense of it completely. But I think that's really the radical good news and the message of humankind being made in God's image, of everything coming everything in creation coming from the artistry of God's hand, and ultimately God becoming flesh in Jesus and the Spirit moving all around us. is that God is everywhere. God is everywhere. And we continue to have so many opportunities to give thanks to God, to hang up our pictures of God's work in and through our neighbors, and to keep being open to God's expansive love in the entryways of our hearts and our minds. So may the Psalms be that entryway for us, and may the eyes of Jesus that you meet today continue to invite you deeper into God's wide story and work. Amen.